That's Mr. Kerr. Generous, so much. And I saw what the presiding officer did there. Boom, boom, on the extra time in this debate. Well done, presiding officer. Um, my goodness me. We started off by talking about how we're going to be united about football and then spent the next 15, 16 minutes creating division where there doesn't need to be division. I mean, that was the speech. That was the speech that was going to be given to the previous motion. But they couldn't be bothered to update it, so they gave the old speech instead. Yeah. It's ridiculous, frankly, that the Minister couldn't actually live up to our opening paragraph about the fact this is something that can unite us. And this is a rare privilege for me as a backbencher now to yes. respond to a government motion in this Parliament. So some first reflections on football, Scottish football in the last week. Tuesday was only a friendly. And as Steve Clark said, sometimes you need to take your medicine. The men's team will come back stronger yeah. because what's being achieved right now by Steve Clark and the Scotland men's team is truly exciting to watch. Now, the FA need to come up with their own anthem for when England play. It's that, it's that simple. They really shouldn't be using God Save the King. That anthem is the anthem of the whole United Kingdom, yeah. not England. That's true. And Matters relating to football fans traveling to and from matches in Scotland in buses or any other means of transportation is a matter for the authorities in Scotland. End of story. Yeah. No need to go talking about it anymore. It's dealt with. It doesn't exist. Those guidelines withdrawn and rightly so. In a chamber deb debate last week, I said something about us not living our lives as isolated beings. And even though we have our individual identities and preference, we are woven together in society. I believe in the power of community and the importance of the identity of a community. I believe in civic pride. Whenever I think about football, presiding officer, and the community, my mind goes back to 1978. Yes, I am that old that I can remember, 1978. Point of order, Gillian Mackay. I apologise to Mr Kerr for interrupting. I do actually want to hear what he's got to say, so could I very gently ask, presiding officer, for your guidance to ask members to speak through their microphones. Thank you. Thank you very much for that point of order. I was going to make that point myself. I didn't know whether or not, with um, the projection that Mr Kerr has, that it would yeah. be... <laughs> But I think it is valuable advice to Mr Kerr and everybody. Mr Kerr, uh, you can have the time back. Please continue. Yes, I'm terribly surprised that you couldn't hear me uh, up there. It's not very far. But I think about 1978, I will pull the microphone down. How's that? Uh, my first exposure in 1978 to the power of football and civic good. And it relates to my hometown's football team, Forfar Athletic. Right. Archie Knox had the managerial reins at Station Park. And he'd go on to do other things with Sir Alex Ferguson, Walter Smith. But the loons, we need microphones that hang down, don't we? That's just another suggestion. But the loons had reached the semi-final of the League Cup, presiding officer. They were to play Rangers, the mighty Glasgow Rangers. The Rangers of Jock Wallace, John Gregg, Derek Johnson, Davy Cooper. And the game was supposed to take place in the November of the year before, but bad weather had forced it to be played on a Monday night in February 1978. There was a huge build-up to the game. And I think that the whole population of Forfa travelled to Glasgow, to Hampden Park for the march. And we were bursting with pride. Pride in the team, pride in the town. And as I remember, even Forfa's Rangers supporters had got behind Forfa Athletic. On the night itself... The part-time players of Forfra Athletic took the mighty Glasgow Rangers to extra time. I suppose, realistically speaking, the result was inevitable, but you can dream. And that night, even though we were defeated, we all floated home to Forfra uh, because it was a dream fulfilled. We, and I emphasise we, had nearly caused a football sensation. And the we being the team and the people of Forfra. And what hasn't changed since 1978, presiding officer, is the profound significance of football clubs to communities and the positive impact they can have. And it's my belief in community that leads me to urge caution against one-size-fits-all policies that neglect the importance of individuals within the wider context of a community. Politicians 
should empower the people, not instruct. People are agents, not objects. And football clubs remind us of this by serving individual needs while bringing communities together. And for young people, football clubs inspire dreams, dreams of playing. For working people, they offer 90-minute escape from life's stresses. Football brings people together, promotes intergenerational companionship, strengthens family bonds. It creates cherished memories. For me, growing up, it was about going to Station Park with my dad, complete with the half-time for for Bridey, and, let, and later taking my daughter and sons to the football. These, those who have not partaken of a for for Bridey have missed out on one of life's great culinary delights. So I, I just urge my colleagues to try uh, Bridey's. Uh, these family outings that I'm describing, presiding officer, resonate across our nation. And we should be mindful as policymakers and lawmakers about what will strengthen and give support to the institution of the family. Communitarian identity cannot be imposed from above. It happens when local people come together and act voluntarily. And football plays a powerful role in bringing communities together. Its impact extends beyond the stadium, as fans gather in pubs and cafes before and after games, supporting local businesses. And football can combat the blight of loneliness. We don't speak enough about loneliness in this parliament because I believe it's one of the biggest silent killers in our society. Isolation and loneliness. And football brings people together. Football clubs increasingly as well offer work experience to young people, especially in the realms of social media and marketing, and creates and lays career pathways that many go on to follow. Through charity work, football clubs support vulnerable community members and, and global causes. And whilst there are numerous examples in central Scotland that I would like to draw, and I want to bring the Chamber's attention to the work being done by East Stirling Football Club, who have recently announced their EcoVision, a project which aims to make the club carbon neutral by 2035. This season alone, East Stirling are offsetting carbon emissions from all away game travelling, planting a tree for every 10 programmes sold at home games, and using recycled materials for all new goods sold. And at the heart of East Stirlingshire's project is sustainability. But sadly, for many football clubs across the country, financial sustainability is becoming more difficult. With football inflation, rising costs in the general economy, changes in how people partake in football, support football, running a football club in the lower divisions is becoming increasingly difficult financially. But because of the societal benefits, the society benefits, that local football clubs create. This parliament, I think, has a duty to explore the ways in which we can get behind our local football clubs. We should explore, explore how to use football to create more social good and to create sustainable and tangible better outcomes. And when the minister was being positive in about the three minutes of her speech where she was positive, she did talk about things that are of vital importance. I've mentioned loneliness. She mentioned physical, mental and emotional health. Mm -hmm. And these issues are best tackled through social interaction and cohesion that the local football club can create. It's good for people, and it's also good for the local economy. Of course, I'm not arguing for a blank check for football clubs, but public bodies, as well as third sector organizations, ought to be exploring how to develop deeper connections with football clubs, to harness their broad appeal, to power social change and social good across the entire demography of a community. Presiding officer, football clubs are at the heart of our communities. They bring people from different generations together. They strengthen family bonds. They bring individuals a sense of identity, a civic pride, and that is shaped by a shared history and a shared local culture. Football is at the heart 
of Scottish life. And we in this Parliament should recognise and encourage the creative and positive reach of Scottish football. And for the remainder of our debate, I hope we'll hear less of grievance and grudge and much more a celebration of what community football clubs are achieving for their communities right across our nation. Thank you very much, Mr. Kerr.